Unauthorized opinions expressed on the internet would be censored. We are live. We are live. This is real. <laughs> Welcome back to Unauthorized Opinions, uopod.com. Like, share, subscribe. It's pure propaganda and it's super cringe, by the way. I literally went to the polls with nothing in mind. I saw a can of orange soda in the parking lot. <laughs> And it's I was like, yeah, there we go. An unopened can of orange soda just chilling <laughs> in the parking lot. I was like, yeah, I got to vote for Trump, dude. Your podcast f sucks. It's mental, mate. It's absolutely mental. I'll be honest. I thought it was kind of offensive when you talk so much about the Loch Ness Monster. Political climate. And Andrew, treat yourself, okay? Especially if you start, I don't know, getting, getting in good with homeless people. Unauthorized opinions streaming everywhere at uopod.com. Cock a doodly doodly doo, man. A meeting, a meeting of the minds. John Cabrutus, how are you guys? From all over the world, I think. Yeah, I mean, I'm from Brazil. Where, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Canada, outside of Toronto, like f half an hour east of Toronto. What about you, John? I'm in Virginia, right outside Washington, D.C. Oh, you're in the thick of it. You're in the good part, I think. Yeah, I'm in Real Alexandria. Politically speaking, Alexandria, I feel like there was some Walking Dead that happened there. I'm probably wrong, but I think uh, it's Wonder interesting. Wonder Woman 1984. My apologies. Yeah. I don't want to get uh, my Wonder Woman references wrong. Um, interesting how we all came to talk. I think, prove me, tell me if I'm wrong about this, guys, but through this whole thing that happened to you, Cabrutus, and I want to get first and foremost your take on this. Um, why, why what you were doing? Why this whole thing on Steam? Is it just uh, Sweet Baby Inc. that one of their employees saw you and saw the community that you were a part of or started, and they said, "I don't like this"? Or was there something else that tipped them off to this? Were you involved in anything else before this? Tell us how this came came to be. Uh, yeah, that, that's a, that's an interesting question. I wasn't involved with anything besides playing video games, you know, my whole life. I never had a, you know, internet career, you know, I never even tried to start a YouTube channel. I never, I just made some live streams like lots of years ago, just for, just so some friends of mine could watch me play World of Warcraft, you know, just this kind of stuff. I never tried to be a internet persona, you know. I never tried to to be popular, famous, anything. And yeah, I mean, they just got mad about the list because the list um, is showing. I mean, it's highlighting their work in lots of different games. And that's all that happened. No, I had no previous involvement. I, I, in fact, I have never heard about Kim Belair, you know, Chris Kinder, you know. I, I have never uh, heard before uh, about these guys before all of this. You know, I'm really, really new to everything. John from thatparkplace.com. I want to ask you, how aware were you of, you know, Sweet Baby Inc. or anything about that before this happened? I mean, they're up here in my native home country, or at least that's where, you know, she's got her start, uh, Kim Belair, and they've, it's written all over their website about all the stuff that they do. How aware of them were you before this all popped off, really? Uh, I wasn't super aware of them, but I think they had kind of popped up on my radar, maybe going back to like October, November 2023. Uh, I know that there were some criticisms of like the, the developers and uh, some of the comments that they had made regarding Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, when it was still like in the marketing stages and things like that. So I think there, I was, was somewhat aware of them um, before uh, all this kind of took off. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of the things, Cabrutus, and I want to get good into this because there's always going to be this backlash. I think the co-founder said on LinkedIn, was it, that he was part of a far-right you know, conspiracy campaign um, of harassment. Their problem seems to be that they just don't like that you're pointing out their work. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, if there's been anything else, I think there's always room for people to say, you know, I'm sure there's a there's some people on the internet who have sent them mean things probably. They've probably said things that I wouldn't approve of or you would, none of, nobody here would approve of. But is their gripe with you literally just you pointing out what games they work on because if you look at the the steam community 
it literally just says don't recommend and then shows the link as to where you can find the evidence that they've worked on the game. Is there any other problem with you that they've expressed that you might have done wrong? Uh, yeah, so n not really, I would say. <laughs> I, I think it's, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I was thinking while you were speaking, I was thinking, I was thinking if there could be anything else, but there really is not, you know. The thing is, those people, they are, they don't like when someone do not agree with them, you know, you know what I mean? They really do not like if you simply, um, hey, um, so you said this, I do not agree with you, I'm going to do my own thing, and I'm going to share my opinion about what you're doing. Um, if you take a look at the list, for example, it's all the info that is there are just no public info, you know, info that the uh, info that originally got you know shared by themselves you know i'm just you know um putting a highlight on it i'm just putting you know i'm just letting people know about it and some people ask uh i ask why i do not recommend the games um so um if you when you put a game into a creator list you have three options you can either recommend the game not recommend it and you can also there's also a third option which is called informational you can also just make a informational review you know i would pick this one but the problem is if you pick the informational one it won't show up in the, on the story page you know i mean your reviews will not show up uh, to the users that are following you in the story page. So this is why I picked the not recommended one. Um, for a game to make into my list, um, it has to be involved with Sweet Baby Inc. in any, I mean, in any form. Soon, I will expand this to any kind of DEI consultation company. But right now, it's just Sweet Baby. And there's no personal opinion about it. No, either either a game is involved or not. It's a fact. You know, it's not subjective. But when I put not recommended, yeah, this is me just sharing my opinion. You know, uh, um, you understand this? The criteria for the game to mm -hmm. be on my list is not about my personal opinion. It is really not. There are tons of games that I really do not like. And, but I do not put them on the list in the list because I mean that's not my purpose. I just want to inform people. I want to let people know about 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 this, um, and that's it. That's my main goal. That that's just about it. I want to bring up what the sweet babying people said a couple, few weeks ago at this point in the Kotaku article. Um, we we can get to them in a bit, but it was. David Bedard, the guy who said there was a far-right campaign of harassment, he said, making something more representative and more joyful for a marginalized person in a video game is not a zero-sum game. It doesn't make anything worse for the male character or for the white character. And then Kim Belair said, people can't imagine that we might do anything else but DEI. They can't imagine that we're just talented writers, talented narrative designers, and that people are hiring us because we tell good stories, we collaborate well, and because we write video games. They have to diminish our accomplishments and our identities. And I want to ask you, John, they have made, in my opinion, I won't put this opinion on either of you guys, but they have made a large concerted effort here in all the press that they've done to say, this isn't anywhere near all of the stuff that we do. The DEI work that we do and the narrative consulting that we do is not the not the majority of our work. We're just writing. We're just writing stories, storylines for video games. We're doing consulting work. But then you go on their website and I would I would wager 85% of what they talk about is how inclusive and DEI driven the company is. Now, why do you guys think that they're trying to, you know, say that this isn't what they do? Like, it, it's clear to me that this is what they're proud of doing. They believe in it. They think that there should be uh, diversity, equity, inclusion in video games and in the people producing them, in the, in the offices producing them. But then they sort of shy away on that. Do you agree with that, John? Tell me if I'm wrong. But if you agree with that, why do you think they're shying away from this sort of thing? Uh, I, I Do I agree with the fact that they believe that they're just, they do more than just DEI? Is that what you're asking? I'm asking if you believe, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Do you think that's all, all they're doing or do you think that they are doing all these other amazing things and we're just focusing on, on the DEI aspect? No, I think they're lying. I think that entire, they lied to Kotaku there. If you go back to the 2019 
game developers uh, presentation that Kim Belair gave, she is very clear uh, that uh, it's not about uh, writing good stories to her. It's all about the representation, the DEI, the identity politics. I mean, she even gives an example about how she went to or how she was hired by a video game company that uh, she claims had a... Uh, the cast was not diverse enough. They wanted to diversify it. So they thought about put, adding a Frenchman and they were going to have him with a beret <laughs> and a stripe and all this stuff. And, and she was like, no, you need to make them a person of color. And she's, and they, they told her like, no, we're not going to do that. And she's like, well, we need to do better than that. We can't have these, we just can't have this Frenchman. It has to be a person of color. So to me, I mean, that's the example that she's giving about the kind of a, um, advice that she she provides uh, it's very clear that it's all about identity politics because apparently adding a Frenchman to this game wasn't uh, diverse enough for her so I think she's they're 100% lying trying to spin a narrative um, that they do more than just the DEI stuff and and sure maybe they do a little bit of that you want to expand out about uh, uh, you want to expand outside of the DEI stuff she also talks about how they do um, sensitivity reading which I would say is still within the DEI where they're basically coming in and trying to change language because it might offend certain groups or certain people. Um, but yeah, I think that's totally just a narrative that they are pushing through Kotaku uh, and trying to shape that narrative in their favor. But uh, I think that uh, that completely and utterly failed, uh, given the <laughs> fact that she contradicts it so much in previous interviews. Kavrutis, how do you feel about that? Uh, yeah, I agree with my friend John here. I think that they are lying. Um, and the reason they are lying is because they know that right now uh, that's bad That's bad marketing for them. You know? that's bad. That makes them look bad. Because you know? if you take a closer look at the games list that they had involvement, man, those games, I mean, the vast majority of them, I would say, were not considered well successful game there are there i mean at least they divided opinions among the gaming community you know and and yeah i mean they're lying they're definitely lying you know we know you know they think that you know the problem is that they think that the gaming community they, they think that gamers are fools you no know? they think that they can that they can easily um fool gamers you know that they can lie to us and that we want not see this i mean Gamers are clever guys, you know, uh, clever persons. Okay, I'm not trying to exclude the girl games. I know they are out there. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I think that, that they are lying, and we 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 know that they are lying. That's 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 what they don't like about it. <laughs> I think it's really strange that you spend a lot of your time as one of these companies championing this. And, and the example you gave, John, was great about how, you know, that's not diverse enough. And like I mentioned, it's all over their website. Look at the diversity we do. We have a diverse group of people. We can even connect you to job opportunities potentially for diverse people. And they spend all this time saying how great it is. And as soon as the mirror is held up and say, and you say literally, these are the games that you do. These are the games that you work on, and this is what you put into the games. So They're like, no, 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 we don't actually do that. How dare you say that? You're harassing us. Which I think is really odd, but I think it shows that they inherently know that they're doing something wrong. They, it, You wouldn't be you know, so ashamed of the work you're doing if you're proud of it. Like, I'm not uh, not going to go on some interview with, I don't know, IGN France and be like, yeah, I don't write for this website. I don't write for Blaze News. What are you talking about? I don't talk about politics ever. It'd be really weird. And I would think that somebody would do that only if they weren't proud of something that they're doing. And and, and I mentioned Kotaku and, I, and I'm confused as to what goes on with this particular woman uh, Alyssa Mercante, uh, Mercant Mercante. I'm not entirely sure. I've never heard the name spoken, but in her interview with the Sweet Baby Ink people, she said she infiltrated the group. Was that your group, Cabrutus, that she said she infiltrated? Oh, yeah. The public Discord server that you literally has just to <laughs> click a link to get in. Yeah, she totally infiltrated it. Right? <laughs> I have no idea how she could do it. I mean, she must be, I don't know, a uh, daughter of James Bond. I don't know. <laughs> right. She's a great spy. <laughs> <laughs> she was saying about how like there was offensive memes and everything. And of course, she's coming to their defense saying that they don't want to, you know, they, they're being harassed, of course, as well. And all the same thing. My question to you guys and John, we can start with you on this one. How do these people and by these people, I mean, people who are f who, who really want 
diversity to be a main focus in the game, or at least something that upholds the game and is important to the storyline. How do these people get into these positions? Has it been uh, percolating for a long time and we just didn't notice? Did we start from the top and somebody new got in and started hiring these people? But particularly at big outlets like Kotaku and Bioware, which we can get to, and Ubisoft and EA, uh, Cliffhanger is another one off the top of my head. Um, how, how does this come to be and how does they... It, it come to a point where, you know, they're all backing each other and it seems like they've been there, you know, just, just champing at the bit to, to defend this position. Yeah. I mean, so this is a pretty big question. I think there's a lot of different factors. Um, obviously uh, there's a lot of the financial financial factors that go into it with the ESG uh, funding for specific um, identities that uh, employees are hired. Larry Fink obviously made that famous, what, 2019, I think, at the New York Times book deal summit where he was like, we're going to force behaviors and uh, we're basically going to make it so companies aren't going to get our financing if they don't um, change what their employee uh, identities look like. Uh, so there's that. I think there's also a government regu- I think there's a lot of um, top-down stuff coming from governments, specifically here in the United States, uh, that have been kind of... Um, I don't want to say like mandating it, but they've definitely been um, providing lots of carrots to um, make that go along, especially after uh, 2020 and uh, the uh, the summer of love and the George Floyd riots and all that stuff. Um, and I think that also played a factor in too. There was a lot of social capital. And I think we saw a lot of people kind of capitalize on that social capital. Uh, I think probably Sweet Baby Inc. was one of those companies that did indeed capitalize on that. Um, we saw that with the Black Lives Matter movement, where those people were getting um, movie deals with like Warner Brothers Discovery and all of that stuff. And I don't think they've produced anything, uh, but they took the money and they bought a bunch of mansions. So uh, I think there's a lot of different factors. Um, I think I kind of touched on three of those there. And then obviously, there's probably is some in-group stuff. We've seen people like, uh, I can't, I'm blanking her name right now, um, the woman who created Validate. She literally talked about how she was only hiring uh, certain people um and not hiring other people so i do think that there's a little bit of that going on as well so there's a lot of different factors um going into all of that cabrutus i know down in brazil they've had somewhat of a similar political uh landscape in the united states the last seven or eight years but as a brazilian guy who who as you said was just you know a gamer as of a couple months ago and now you're you're thrown into this how much of this was apparent how much of this was going on in brazil down there like are are you guys facing constant uh you know stuff in your face about diversity and inclusion and equity in all sorts of things like we are up here like up here like it's apparent in almost every tv commercial that there's been some diversity consulting done how much of it is it in your face down there in brazil as compared to how much it has been you know in the last few weeks uh yeah, that, that's an interesting question. For example, we have some big, big uh, TV um, channels here and that they are pretty well known for, you know, uh, forcing political agendas, you know, this diversity stuff and uh, being politically correct, you know, being leftists, you know, progressives and, you know, you can call them that. But we also have our Fox News around here in Brazil. You know, we also have the right wing, you know, channels, and it's pretty well. It's 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 very divided, you know. And, and Brazilian people has been. I mean, it always. I mean, guys, uh, I know it happened in the United States, but Trump's election in 2016, it really. Is, I mean, it really kicked off some really really um, stuff. Uh, some some really devising stuff here in Brazil too. Uh, we we do have those you know uh, woke stuff. We do have political agendas, progressives here because Brazil is pretty much like a United States DLC. You know you can. I mean, if something <laughs> happens, yes, it is. You know, if something happens in the United States, it will influence Brazil. Um, believe me, it will. You know. Um, and yeah, we see some um, TV commercials. We see like TV shows. We see like there are our entire uh, our entire cast of actors and famous people, you know, the artists. They are entirely, you know, um, woke. You know, they entirely support this kind of stuff because 
that's I mean they can they they get money from it. You know, uh, it's a Brazilian law that literally pays artists to make you know um, shows and to make movies. You know, movies that nobody's gonna watch, nobody's gonna care. But I mean, it's all funded by the government, so they support this kind of stuff because that's that's where they get money from. You know, many of those artists, I mean, Brazilian artists, nobody cares about it anymore in Brazil. If if they if they make a concert, you know, a show. It would probably not be very successful, but since they get money from the government for doing this, I mean that there there are literally no risks. You know, they can just go there and do their stuff, and that's biggest. I, I would say that this is one of the main biggest reasons they are like this. Uh, they support this kind of stuff. You know, they have this kind of opinions, and and yeah, we 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 do see a lot of it in Brazil, but I would say that it's not as bad as it is in the United States. You know, I would say that we Brazil we still have, I mean, Brazil is a pretty much a Christian country. You have over 97% of Christians here in Brazil. So there is a resistance. I mean, there, there is not, there is no, no, um, wokeness didn't contaminate everything here. You know? uh, so I'm glad for that. <laughs> I wanted to also ask you about, the media, you mentioned, of course, all these leftist outlets. Uh, do you think they've covered you fairly or or the media in general? Have you had any conversations with any of some of the bigger leftist outlets? Has, you know, IGN or Kotaku reached out to you? Have they, have you done any interviews with them? How have they treated you overall, the, the American media? Um... Yeah, they have not been treating me fair. No, I mean, the information is out there. I've seen many, many YouTubers, even small channels, small outlets, covering this whole situation way better than them. So, I mean, they just don't want to spread the truth because they know that the truth is that Sweet Baby started a harassment campaign against me. Sweet Baby tried to make me lose my Steam account, my community, even my Twitter profile, you know, my ex Twitter profile. And they know, they know, but they don't want to tell people this because they know, they also know that this doesn't help their narrative. And, and yeah, some of them try to reach me, including CBC. CBC, you know, just released a hit piece. Um, no, I, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was kind of hit piece because they were, you know, signing with Sweet Baby. And again, they were lying by omission. They completely uh, ignored the fact I just mentioned. So CBC tried to contact me. Um, a girl from from The Verge tried to contact me. Um, a big uh, German outlet tried to contact me. You know, but I I do not answer them. I ignore them because I don't think they are willing to. I don't think they are getting contact with me to know my side. You know, they just throw traps, you know, they just, you know, release some traps. I, I've seen some questions they made me. They sent me some questions through email. Bro, some of those questions are like, I mean, pretty obvious, you know, like traps. They, they want to, to get me to fall for one of those so they can use anything I say against me. Uh, they can't tell us, tell us one of the questions they asked you or a couple of the, what kind of questions did they ask you? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. I can. I can say one. <laughs> there, okay. there were two of them. One. One was very political, but there was another one that was more related to games. They said this. I was watching one of your. I mean, that was the guy asking. Me, I was watching your live stream, and you said that you want uh, a good-looking woman in gaming again. Do you believe that a gaming can can only be good if it has good women? You know, that was the kind of question. And I was very tempted to just answer yes, you know, but <laughs> I, I, did, <laughs> I did not. I really did not because, yeah, I mean, it's not worth it, you know. So, yeah, um, also they made some questions about the U.S. elections and, you know what's my opinion? This and that. They want me to. They want to. They want to be able to throw me in the um, Trump uh, um, mob. You know, like they want to be able to call me a fascist Trump supporter. But hey, man, I'm in Brazil. I do not even get to vote in the U.S. elections. You know, so why do my opinion matters? You know, I have my political uh, beliefs, but I mean, this all all of this that I'm doing. 
this is all really about video games. You know, I don't want to mix politics into it because I don't think it's necessary. And I think that this is going to deviate my uh, mm. goal, my objective. I just want games to be good again. And I want us video gamers, I mean, I want us gamers, the gaming community to be respected by those developers. I want, that's how I want, you know? And, and yeah, they, they, they've been trying to, 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 to get in government, but I mean, if I, if they, if I find, I mean, it, it can be a leftist even, but if some of them are really, really willing to you know, tell the truth and to hear my side, I don't know, that could be a possibility of me talking today, but I really do not believe that they are like this, though they just want to make me look bad. So this is why I don't talk to them. And that was CBC who asked you that? Yeah, CBC sent me in some emails like, two weeks ago, something like this. And CBC was one of them, but there were more, more, no more. There were others. Uh, for example, The Verge, I, I think it was GameStar. It's a big outlet from German, uh, Germany. And there were more, but I'm, I don't remember right now. I'm sorry. But yeah, some of them tried to contact me. I wanted to point out this uh, article from John from, when is this? Two days ago? Uh, about yeah april fools we all wish um it almost sounded a bit like trump there april fools um bioware from my home country now they're they were supporting the transgender day of visibility here and what was interesting to me was they said they've always been a part of our worlds and we're proud to support them both within our game so then immediately i'm just like what year did bioware start and that's 1995, I believe. And they're starting in northern Alberta, Canada. And it's like, why is this a claim that you've just always been in support of this when clearly none of this stuff was talked about in the 90s and the early 2000s? It really wasn't until, you know, after 2010 when people started talking about gender and transgenderism. So I'm wondering, what was your take on, you know, these guys who sold out, what, eight, seven, eight hundred a million dollars to to ea why are they so hard with with pushing this and making it seem is this this has always been what they think yeah i mean i don't i don't think that's what they've always thought <laughs> obviously <laughs> uh um i you can go back i think they only really started doing this stuff on social media like the past couple of years obviously you have a blog post from i think 2014 where they're explaining that character whose name is krem um, and they wanted to add him in. So that's only uh, the last decade. But uh, yeah, I think they're trying to do this because they're trying to normalize this stuff. Like this stuff is normal. This is the agenda that they're trying to push. Uh, and they clearly are trying to push this agenda. I know I got a lot of flack on the video that I did for this because they're like, oh, this day has been around for forever. Well, Bioware has never talked about it until this year when it was on Easter. So I definitely think it was uh, definitely an attack on, uh, on Christians uh, and trying to push that. Well, what I think about this whole, you know, it, it's been a day before, it, it's a made-up day, so it's not like it's about Jesus, or it's not like it's about Thanksgiving, where it's been a specific, you know, thing in, in history. President Biden could just say, no, it's actually April 4th, or whatever, it's actually this day this year, or else why are you making the announcement every single year? I think that's just more muddying of the waters to try and say, hey, it's actually just, you know, a, a coincidence, and all this other stuff that we've done that's evidence towards the contrary you guys shouldn't believe uh cabrutus what is some of the you know what are some of these companies that people maybe aren't aware of are there some big games that you can think of that people aren't aware that some of these companies have worked on because i know like th there was the obviously the sweet baby ink game we've got um we've got gotham knights i think it was assassin's creed i, I don't remember what was in that? And then we've got a few other ones that I can't remember at the top of my head. Um, are there any ones that people would, might be surprised to think have worked with some of these companies? Mm, that's that's a good question. Surprised? I, I'm not sure because when those people get involved with a game, it's easy to tell, you know, it's easy to <laughs> tell. For example, if uh, for example, Forspoken is one of them. Forspoken had involvement with Black Girl Gamers, which is another uh, DI company. And it wasn't surprising for me at all when I know about this. 
things, you know, when I knew about it. Although I, it's really easy to tell when a game um, has involvement with them. For us, gamers, the thing is, for parents that buy games for their, their children, now that's a problem. For example, Spider-Man 2, um, bro, that game is a trap. No, that game is a trap. I mean, I've, in my opinion, Spider-Man 2 is the most woke gamer game in the history. It can, I mean, they can release an even more woke game than Spider-Man 2 in some day. Yes, they can. But to date, I think Spider-Man 2, the, the last year's Spider-Man 2 is the most woke game, woke game in history. And there are many parents that just buy the game for their children because, I mean, it's Spider-Man, right? Spider-Man, lots of children, lots of kids love the character. And the parents have no idea what kind of content that, that one of those games can have. And Tell us about that. Sorry. Tell us about that. Spider-Man 2, I know they put the, the pride flags in there, but is there anything else in there that people might, that um, I don't even know about? There's, there's anti-police um, messages, you know, for example... Uh, Mary Jane, she is ugly AF, bro. I mean, I've <laughs> never seen. I mean, her face is even smaller than mine. You know, they did her bad. Yeah, she is awful looking, and she is. Uh, she's powerful. You know, she saves Peter Parker from a venom attack. I mean, how? How? She? How can she protect? Peter Parker from Venom, you know, at, at some point. And they also have this, um, in the Spanish version of the game, they had neutral language stuff. I don't know about the Brazilian Portuguese because, I mean, I didn't play this game. I, I Honestly, I have no interest. And not only because of Sweet Baby, but, I mean, also because I, I mean, I've not been very much into superheroes for a long time, you know. But it's still, um, I, I, I don't want them to become products of political agendas. You know, I don't want them to become tools to spread political agendas and those people's personal beliefs. So the parents, you know, they have no idea that this kind of stuff can be inside those games. And that can partly be, be I mean, the reason of this is partly because I would say, okay, I mean, that's just my opinion, I'm not trying to mention anyone here but i know that in the united states there are some conservative personalities you know that they really despise gaming they do not like gaming they they say that gaming are for silly children you know this kind of stuff i must say that you guys should not do it you know i mean talking to them directly you guys should not do it because video games are part of the culture war, and I would say that they are one of the most influential form of medias that ever existed. So please do not, I mean, I, they, they should not you know, um, do this. Um, when they do this kind of stuff, especially when you are speaking with younger people, they will, I mean, they will go to the other side, and the other side isn't, isn't what we want, right? So, yeah. Um, so yeah, there's there's this this situation. All right. Before I let you guys go, I want to ask you about the Black Girl Gamers, which Cabrutus you mentioned there, John. We read on your website about a week ago now that they threatened legal action against you. Tell us why they are doing that. If they reached out to you, any lawyers reach out to you? Anything you're allowed to say about that right now? Yeah, so we've uh, publicly addressed this earlier this week uh, with our lawyer, Ron Coleman, um, over on Valiant Renegade's YouTube channel, as well as on Ron Coleman's YouTube channel. They did indeed send us a cease and desist from a law firm in Chesapeake, Virginia. And uh, we have responded to that uh, cease and desist letter saying that, uh, I don't know the exact language, but saying that uh, we find their claims like fr frivolous and erroneous and we're not going to be complying with the cease and desist what um, are they I, trying to get you to cease and desist from doing they took issue i believe it, it's hard to tell i mean the cease and desist doesn't <laughs> provide any specific examples they're basically just saying that uh i and the website defamed the organization and uh its founder J. Ann lopez but it's really unclear exactly what they are trying to um what they're what exactly we how we defamed how i and the, and the website defamed her and black girl gamers it's it's unclear 
<laughs> okay, I won't comment on that for, I don't know, the purposes of legal reasons. Don't want to get anybody. My opinion doesn't count on this. Um, Cabrutus, anything else you want to say before we go here? I mean, you're fighting the good fight, I think. Um, I'm happy to know that there are people, you know, like... I'm uh, I'm not as young as I used to be. I'm up here in Canada. I don't know as much as I think that you guys probably know on a lot of these subjects, but it, it pleases me and everyone I know, to be honest, to know that there's a group out there, um, a, a community out there who, like you said, you're not even doing anything. You're just saying, hey, this is what what these people do and that's enough and i think you've been very good at saying especially with what you mentioned about the emails you've been getting from media questions you've been very good with saying hey this is not worth it this it will likely be used against me and there's nothing i can say to convince these people otherwise so i think you've been very good for that is there anything that you're working on is there any um you know next step that you're going to take with this you mentioned you're going to start including different companies is there a process for that tell us what you if you have any plans to you know take this momentum you've got and then really work towards something else uh yeah absolutely uh the website i have a website that is being built right now it is called didetected.com if you go there right now uh, you, will, you will just see a static image, but it's it's being made right now. It is no, it's coming um, in a few weeks. Uh, just wait for it, okay? And I think that the website is going to be perfect to start expanding this. I will also expand my creator page to include other games that I know are involved with the AI stuff. But right now, uh, since I I'm just talking about Sweet Baby Inc. I won't add them, but in due time, they will get added. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> don't worry, guys, about it. And there's also my Twitter and my YouTube channel. I, I, I'm, I've been, I just got started with the YouTube. I you know, like I told you, I was just a gamer. I, I never, um, I, I, I was already aware of Sweet Baby, but I mean, I didn't, I never tried to make a YouTube channel to you know to be a personality or this kind of stuff. I'm just getting started, so and yeah, I intend to grow my YouTube channel, keep posting more and more uh, content in there. And uh, yeah, this is me adding a game to the list. You know, people love to see me doing this. Those well. Yeah, I thought this was yeah. really funny and a really good format where you're just literally saying, I do not recommend this game. And that's <laughs> what happens. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I do not recommend this game, you know. Uh, <laughs> that's just my personal opinion. I, I have the right to have one, right? So, uh, yeah, I really like this glasses because I, I think I look like Bret Hart when I... <laughs> Well, yeah. Okay, awesome. okay, anyway, yeah. So yeah, that's a, that are my plans. Um, I'm glad the gaming community is with me in this one. I'm glad that I mean it's it is an honor for me to have this opportunity to try to make a difference, you know, a, a good difference in gaming because I love video games. I mean, it's my hobby. My it's my hobby since I was six years old, five years old, and I will do my best to you know to 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 help the gaming community all over the world that's it and tell us where you learned english from your english is very good brazilians are good very usually very good with english they like to pretend that they aren't but they we know that they are <laughs> where did you learn english is it from games uh yeah mainly games and heavy metal music i'm a metal <laughs> head you know i love heavy metal uh i love uh, I remember the first time I realized, hey, I am understanding English, was uh, <laughs> when I was hearing a Men of War song called Nice. Farm. Yeah, I mean, it's my favorite heavy metal band, bro. <laughs> Brothers Manowar. everywhere. Um, Warriors of the yes, World. And it, yeah, yeah, it's it's a music called Call to Arms. It's from the Warriors of the World album. And it was the first time ever I realized, hey, I, I can't understand English. And yeah, World of Warcraft was where I got to start practicing my speech, my English speech. So I was already, you know, a guy who already knew how to read and even write in English. But in World of Warcraft, I have learned how to speak, like, because writing and reading are totally different um, beasts compared to speaking. You know, I know many people that are good English writers and readers, but they cannot speak. So, yeah, that's what I learned. And thanks God I did. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I didn't even try. More I that. just learned, you know. Huh? 
More dots, more dots. Oh yeah, more dots. <laughs> yes, <laughs> more dots. Yeah, I remember the the Onyxia video, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And John, before uh, before we go here, tell us where you think this is all heading. Do you think this is gonna all end in you know reduced EI in gaming, or are we gonna push forward and make sure that that guy is more French than me, and I'm pretty French? Um, where do you think this is heading? It, by end of the year next year are we going to get a break from some of this or are they just going to put their foot on the pedal even harder do you think i think long term this is going to be a constant struggle um going back and forth right now i I don't see really receding i mean we've been doing this for almost a decade now and it seems to be going steady right um as far as um what happens i think a lot of it depends on what happens in November, if I'm being honest, I do think that a lot of this stuff comes from the top down. I think it does. A lot of it is the uh, the federal government of the United States uh, pushing a lot of this stuff, allowing it to be done, not enforcing um, laws that should probably that they're probably breaking by pushing a lot of this stuff. Um, and uh, I think that will probably determine a lot of whether or not you continue to see this stuff and where the battle kind of um, moves from there. But uh, I do think that a lot of these uh, video game companies are going to continue doing what they're doing. I know Mark Kern has talked about this quite a bit, that there's usually like a three to five year cycle. And so you're going to be seeing a lot of these games still having this stuff uh, within the next three to five years. And you might see some changes happening. Um, I already do think that there are a lot of like good good changes that seem to be happening. I mean, we're seeing stuff like Helldivers 2 have really good success. And I think I'll probably maybe see more kind of what, what he describes as double A video game developers kind of doing this stuff. Whereas like the triple A's will probably continue to shoot themselves uh, in the foot. I think uh, I think Spider-Man 2 is actually a perfect example. If you look at those leaked sales data we got, the leaked sales data we got from um i think it was from a sony uh, playstation maybe last year it the insomniac. first spider-man sold like yeah insomniac it sold it sold like 25 million copies or something like that and spider-man 2 has only sold like 10 million uh, from their last update so it sold uh less than half of what the first one did which uh that's not very good uh that's about what the, the miles morales game did i think so uh you're already kind of seeing people not buying the stuff that has a lot of this DEI ESG stuff injected into it. Um, so I think that's really good. I think what Cabritus is doing is really putting a lot of pressure on a lot of these companies. I mean, we're already seeing these developers absolutely go crazy. <clears throat> uh, the The Siege of Dawn uh, developer just went absolutely uh berserk after he after Cabrutus refused to take the game off the list or i think he added it to the list um and i think that just shows just kind of the power consumers have uh by like not not purchasing these games and i think when you have what is he almost over at three hundred sixty thousand now people on his list uh that is a significant number of gamers who are not going to be purchasing your games and you're looking at like remedy entertainment they're saying alan wake 2 which is a sweet baby inc uh influenced game and only sold 1.3 million and that's their fastest selling game ever. I mean, just imagine if they were able to leverage uh, almost 400,000 more gamers that could have bought that game. I mean, that's that's a significant amount of revenue that, they're, that these companies are now leaving on the table. And it's easily quantifiable now, too. So uh, I do think you might be seeing some changes like that happening, especially maybe from people up in the C-suite that aren't, aren't maybe super aware maybe of what's happening. But uh, at the end of the day, I do think a lot of these people are institutionalized now. It's going to be hard to get them out. I mean... Kern was just taught Kern just did a report on uh, the compulsion games community manager. She's literally come out and said she hates gamers. And then she's previously said she thinks white male gamers were a mistake and the mm, company isn't right. firing her. So uh, it's going to be a long battle because you do have a lot of these people that are institutionalized. So we'll see what happens. I mean, I think different companies are going to go different ways. I think some companies might change directions. I think a lot of companies are probably going to double down, especially these companies that are triple a uh, think that they are too big to fail they have massively successful franchises that they think they can constantly churn out and uh, keep people um, coming, kind of chugging along. But uh, I do think we're already seeing a lot of these developers have been shut down. I mean, look at Saints Row. Volition no longer exists. Um, Cabrutus mentioned Forspoken. Luminous Productions no longer exists. It's been um, basically consumed back into Square Enix. So uh, I think there's already changes happening. Um, and there's going to be more changes, but I do think it's just going to be a constant battle and you're going to see developers fold. You're going to see developers double down, losing a lot of money. Uh, and I think at the end of the day, this stuff is, it is, it is a loser because I think at the end of the day, it's, it just is, it's anti-truth. It's anti-good. 
Couldn't agree more, and I would like to piggyback off of that with EA. I think they're going to be in trouble. Um, all these alternate games coming out, uh, soccer and football-wise, and it, it's just like you mentioned. People are institutionalized into this, and they think that they can do no wrong, and they just keep putting out you know, worse and worse product, it seems, and eventually this is going to fall fall to pieces as the expansion of uh, of indie companies and, and the technologies out there with people being able to make games that are 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 more concerning of the gamer and just a quick example i would say is that people are anticipating like uh a, a new skin of like nhl 2k9 in hd people are excited for something like that and that just goes to show you how much ea had the corner the market corner for so long and you know they've they've completely lost touched um the other prediction i want to make for everyone's audiences is i think if they make this uh spider-man cartoon reimagining happen i think trans venom or trans carnage is going to happen just like they do with x-men that's my prediction for where this is going i think disney can't stop in, in that regard i don't think marvel can stop Bruce, you got a comment on that uh, yeah i mean please don't make it i mean venom is my favorite marvel character you know please don't do anything with eddie brock please <laughs> Though Eddie Brock won't be in the picture anymore, it'll just be the symbiote will be the transgender thing. It'll have it'll be no. non-binary. No. <laughs> Cabrus's yeah, I mean, YouTube channel. Oh, you got more? Yeah. So I mean, so that's also another factor at play too, right? You do have these other major companies that have a lot of these DEI policies, like the Walt Disney Company, where they are licensing their properties, or they have um, they have actual game development studios that kind of do do some of that stuff like Marvel, Marvel games, Lucasfilm games, where they're pushing that stuff. I mean, look what Ubisoft is doing. I mean, that Star Wars Outlaws game, I think is basically dead on arrival because it's clearly like DEI, like woke agenda to the max, right? I mean, they, they chose to make a female character like their smuggler, like, come on. I mean, this, that, that's just we, a DEI agenda. From the, we from should the do another right? one of these. We should do another one of these. Oh. I, want to, I want to talk to you guys about Fallout, yeah. the show. I want to talk to you guys about that Star Wars game. Let's try to do another one. Cabrutus, uh, sure Steam community on there. Tweet Baby Inc. Detected. Check out his YouTube channel. Uh, John, his whole website. I go to it every day. Uh, that parkplace.com. And, uh, of course, we are all with you and hope this lawsuit goes exactly the way you want it to. Thanks again, guys. Uh, we will see you all hopefully next time. Turn it up, Jordan.